Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I finally got a chance to sit down and play the Nintendo Switch demo for Sea of Stars, the indie RPG by Sabotage Studio, and I wanted to share my thoughts on it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and click that little bell and I'll be sure to keep bringing you all the RPG goodness. Thank you. So if you don't already know what Sea of Stars is, let me explain its premise. Sea of Stars is a turn-based RPG that tells the story of two children of the solstice, the warrior monk Valer and the blade dancer Zael, who must combine the powers of the sun and moon to perform eclipse magic, the only force capable of fending off the monstrous creations of the evil alchemist known as the Fleshmancer. Yes, the Fleshmancer. Also, there's a dude named Garl helping them. Sea of Stars is a loving homage to 16 and 32 bit games of yore, like Chrono Trigger, Super Mario RPG, and Secret of Mana, which is why so many old school JRPG fans are hyped for it. But is it overhyped? Well, I decided to investigate and find out for myself. It took me about an hour to get through the demo, and I have thoughts. So many thoughts. So let's get to it. First of all, let's just acknowledge how fantastic the visuals are. Sea of Stars is very rich in color, and I love the amount of detail included in every object and NPC. You really get a sense of just how much detail was added when wandering around the port town of Brisk. Notice the wrinkles and folds on merchant canopies and clothing, the designs on pottery and lanterns, and check out the detail on the world map. It makes Sea of Stars feel like it takes place in a real world with real people, especially given how dynamic the land feels, with gently blowing winds, moving water, flowing hair, etc, etc. Now, I admit at first, I thought it was jarring that the character sprites are all different sizes and shapes. It's almost like the assets were swiped from different sources. But after a while, I started to appreciate how each character has a distinct look. I also like how they have a distinct feel. The writing so far seems to be very humorous and clever, and managed to subvert my expectations more than once. I also like the detailed animations that accompany character reactions, because it makes the writing all the better. And even though the demo doesn't reveal much about the story, all we really learn is that the main characters are heading to Wraith Island and need a ship to get there, thanks to a character named Teeks, we get a glimpse of some world lore, and it's interesting to read slash listen to. Speaking of listening, it's not mind-blowing so far, but I really like the music. There are some nice melodies here, and one track is even from Chrono Trigger composer Yasunori Mitsuda, which got me hyped. Well, it would have if the music wasn't so soothing. In short, so far, so good. But none of this makes a lick of difference if the game is super janky to play. Is it janky? The answer is no! Well, okay, walking around the world map does feel a little slow, and I'm hoping that gets tweaked before the game comes out. But other than that, so far, Sea of Stars is really fun to play. While running around town or exploring dungeons, there's a lot of engaging ways to traverse the environment. You can tightrope walk, climb up and down cliffs, hoist yourself onto a ledge, swim, leap, etc, etc. This prevented me from getting bored while exploring the map and actually encouraged me to go poking around looking for treasure. There's also an enjoyable puzzle element to the demo's big dungeon, which includes warping around the map, collecting crystals, and pushing around blocks. I wasn't crazy about some of the backtracking involved, but since the dungeon wasn't that big, it was manageable. Since I'm talking about dungeons, this is a good place to transition into talking about the exciting combat. It's not entirely flawless, but for the most part, it's really fun and my favorite part of the game so far. Enemy encounters are turn-based, and what's great about Sea of Stars is that when you begin a turn, you have the flexibility to choose the order in which characters attack. This is important because there's quite a bit of strategy involved in combat. For example, not only do enemies have specific strengths and weaknesses, they also have special defense mechanisms known as locks. And if you don't break through these locks by using a specific weapon or skill, you'll be unable to prevent a foe from unleashing a powerful attack and decimating your party. By carefully planning your attack order and which attacks a character uses, you can ensure this doesn't happen. 
Helping you make those decisions is the clever user interface. I appreciate how you can see a timer above an enemy's head that tells you how many turns you have before an enemy attacks. I actually prefer this type of visual cue to how other RPGs signal turn order by having a vertical line at the bottom or top of the screen, which can be hard to see or easy to forget. Another UI addition that gets a big thumbs up is the visual cue for the types of attacks needed to break through an enemy's locks. These weapon and skill icons are easy to understand and hard to miss. And the UI isn't the only thing that I like. I'm really digging the interactive nature of battle. Instead of inputting commands and then sitting back to watch the beautiful combat animations, Sea of Stars offers a way to be proactive even after you've issued commands to your characters. It does this through timed button prompts. For example, instead of Valair simply flinging her magic Muna Ring at enemies, she can cause it to continuously ricochet faster and faster around the battlefield by using her spear as a bat. This requires the player to push a face button at just the right time, and the timing for this action gets increasingly difficult, creating an exciting mini game within a game. You can also use button prompts to do timed attacks for Garl and Zale, and even diminish incoming enemy hits with well-timed defensive maneuvers. And there are other interesting things you can do on the battlefield to gain an advantage, like having Garl hurl enemies around in order to bunch them up for an area of effect spell, or collect combo points by doing various actions so that characters can team up to land an extra powerful blow on the enemy. Fun. I'm less crazy about having to constantly gather live mana in order to boost attacks, however. It's kind of a clever idea since deciding who picks up available mana to get an attack boost is crucial to your overall strategy, but it also feels a bit superfluous and slightly annoying. It's not my favorite thing. Luckily, this is a small nitpick, not a deal breaker. Besides, there are nifty things you can do off the battlefield to mitigate any issues you have on the battlefield. For example, you can go camping and it's actually pretty entertaining. It's at camp where you can use ingredients you've gathered, or in the case of a fun fishing mini game you caught, in order to craft delicious meals that will heal your party in battle. It's also at camp where you can get some rest, check your inventory. By the way, I appreciate how the intuitive storage system makes it easy to swap out equipment, save your game, or hear Teak tell some interesting stories. Camping breaks up the action and adds a deeper sense of immersion to the story and characters. Plus, it's just a nice way to chill. So, is Sea of Stars overhyped? So far, no. I'm genuinely looking forward to playing more of it. It does some inventive and interesting things, and it scratches that itch for a good old-fashioned turn-based RPG experience, but without being a complete carbon copy of other games. What did you think of the demo? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you later.